Good evening and thanks so much for joining us. The political world has lost one of its best. Former Alberta Premier Peter Lougheed passed away last night at the age of 84. Lougheed was Premier from 1971 to 1985. Area MLA Richard Starkey credits Lougheed for changing Alberta's political landscape. Naramanisa has more. Peter Lougheed um, embodied what I, and still does today, embodied what I feel political leadership is all about. Richard Starkey took to Twitter today to pay his respects to Peter Lougheed. Starkey says he first met the Premier back in 1971. He was 11 at the time and played the accordion for him. The Premier was very gracious. He complimented me on my playing and he was, uh, he was uh, a person that treated everybody with, with uh, graciously and politely. And I was fortunate enough to uh, meet the Premier on a number of occasions after that. Starkey says Lougheed was a huge influence behind his decision to enter politics. He went on to say that Lougheed made Alberta more progressive and was the main reason why Alberta has a resource revenue. By making that argument and successfully defending that argument, he not only made Alberta very prosperous, but now other provinces like Saskatchewan and, and like Newfoundland and, and other provinces that are also gaining tremendous uh, revenue through resource revenue. He was one of the finest premiers we've had and one of the good statesmen in Canada. Plus. He fought for the West on the energy program that wouldn't have, wouldn't have it today, it wasn't for him. He was in power here when I was in Saskatchewan yet, but I think he did a great job here. Lougheed's family will celebrate his life in a private ceremony. Plans for a public memorial will be announced in the coming days. Naramanisa, New Cap News. Lougheed definitely left his mark on the political scene. A recent survey named him Canada's greatest premier of the last 40 years. Now here's more on his life and how he's being remembered. Peter Lougheed was so much a part of the province for so long, they called him Mr. Alberta. For Albertans, it's kind of like the end of the aristocracy, the end of the era, the man who changed Alberta politics. Lougheed came to politics after studying at Harvard and playing pro football for the Edmonton Eskimos. He became Premier in 1971, beating the Social Credit Party that had been in power for 36 years. He stepped down in 1985, his popularity still high. I think I mean, what we really accomplished then is to get across to, to the public of Alberta a very positive attitude about things we were doing. Premier Alison Redford remembers a friend and mentor. A leader who forged a path for success and prosperity in our province that is unmatched. Under Lougheed's tenure, Alberta evolved into an energy powerhouse. He named the Blue-Eyed Sheik. He set up Alberta's Heritage Savings Trust Fund, a pig to protect the province from the boom and bust of the oil industry. Lougheed's battles with then Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau over natural resources were epic. Albertans hated Trudeau's national energy program, which they saw as a money grab. Former Prime Minister Jean Chrétien had many dealings over the oil sector with Peter Lougheed. He was uh, tough, but he was a gentleman. Uh, we yes. could disagree with him and there will never be blood, blood, blood between us. Prime Minister Stephen Harper offered this reflection. Uh, Peter Lougheed was uh, truly a giant. Uh, obviously a giant of our province, but also of our country. In spite of all the accomplishments and accolades, Lougheed said it was his family that anchored him. Well, I think my family is the most important. Uh, I've, I've caught up a little bit. We're just right here having my grandchildren play. You. The Lougheed family said today it is touched by the outpouring of condolences. A public memorial is now being planned. Julie Van Dusen, CBC News, Ottawa. After years of wear and tear, the Lloydminster Airport's lighting system is no longer up to par, causing a safety risk to the public. As Mike Baden explains, a hefty rehabilitation project is now costing the city over half a million dollars. 
An airside electrical system was put in place over 30 years ago, but now it is deemed below normal safety standards. There's a risk that we could actually electrocute somebody that's on the runway, and there's an issue that the lights can go out at any time. And with that, the critical component of that is obviously if a plane is on approach and the lights just shut off. City Council has approved a $700,000 rehabilitation project, and Mayor Mulligan says the city must act on this problem. Once you have an identified risk, and there could be a life or a injury potential, then we're obligated to get together, address it, assess the risk and do something. The unexpected project will be paid by a reserve fund that the city uses for emergency purposes. You know, we do carry some reserves. We'll use some of our reserves, but you got to hope that you don't have another unusual event, an unusual snow season, an unusual event like that, because that's when you have to start making really hard decisions. Even though the airside lights are considered unsafe, flights are expected to stay on schedule. During construction, we'll keep the lights operational. They'll do the, uh, their work during the day. And when uh, night comes, they'll be able to switch the lights back on and move off site. Construction is expected to begin on Monday and wrap up in early December. Mike Baden, New Cap News.